Ladies and gentlemen, you are in for a treat. I've got Mr. John Maris in the house. There's two key principles that I have followed that have made all the difference in the world as it pertains to my family. The first one is the most important, that my wife and I are on the same page all the time. Number two is be all in with whatever you're doing in that moment. But but if I if there was a principle that that I could tell my younger self and maybe have learned faster, it's that people matter. Work worth doing is worth doing right. Ladies and gentlemen, you are in for a treat. I've got Mr. John Maris in the house today. Uh, this guy and I go way back. So we're going to get into some serious goods here tonight. Indeed. Today, this Indeed. morning, whatever we it's are. It's going to be good. Yes. And so you're in from all the way in Texas, right? Uh, what part of Texas are you in right now? Dallas. Sure. South Lake. Dallas, yeah. Yep, suburb. So John is currently the president and CEO of Solo Brands, which includes Solo Stove, one of the coolest inventions ever. And I'm not just saying that to make his head bigger than it already is. Chubby's, my favorite swim trunks. No joke, my favorite. My wife can attest to this. I literally bought, I'm not kidding, 12 pairs of chubby swimsuits, right? This is before I even knew that John and his team purchased the What that the tells thing. me is that you're the guy that wears one swim trunk in the morning and then goes back and changes for the afternoon on a six-day vacation. You're getting 12 That's swim right. trunks in. That's right. It was right before my 20th anniversary trip to Costa Vida. Costa Vida. For... <laughs> hey, listen, Costa... we, there's all kinds of great brands we represent today. Yes, yes. So anyway, Really. And I had no idea. And I was on a call with, with John. He's like, yeah, man, you know, Chubbies, we got a lot of good things going. I'm like, wait a minute. Did you just say Chubbies? He said, yeah. Well, yeah, he, uh, he purchased the brand. So, uh, and then also there's two others, um, Icon or Ion or I, Isle. Very Isle. good. Very and good. Isle surfboards? Yeah. Surf and sup. So yeah. stand up paddle boards, surfboards. Nice. Yep. And then Oru, Oku. Oru. Kayaks. Kayak. Kayaks. Yes. Crushed it. Yes, and yesterday one of uh, our team members over here was just looking through them, yeah. um, the the kayak. So, but anyway, we're gonna have a good show today because I have a lot to talk about with this guy. He has a pretty incredible story. But John and I got to know each other. I think it's literally been fifteen years ago. Fifteen, fifteen. No, uh, yeah, fifteen. Yeah, sixteen years. Sixteen years. Oh, seven. I think is when we met. Holy cow, we're getting old, dude. We you you look good though, bro. Well, I, I mean, I, listen, I'm looking at you and I'm thinking, what do you got? 30 inch waist? Yes. I'm just, I'm, can I be you? Yeah. I mean, gotta, my waist has not hard. stayed as small. You got to work hard. Gosh, man. clearly. And, and I look more good water. in chubby swim trunks, bro. Like I, that's. As you long know, as you're not skipping I'm, leg day. Yeah. Don't skip leg I day. I skip way too many leg days. I still have toothpick legs, but you know. Trying to keep that six pack in there that I that I once had or kind of. Nice. You know, right now Chubby's actually is this is a legit thing. We've got open roll call right now. We're looking for the newest models, Chubby's models. This is how we do it. We we send it out and we let our community submit applications. That's how we no. have our models. I totally think that you should submit an application. No. We need to run a gig competition and let people submit photos of their abs, dude. Or or like let the wives or girlfriends submit. Or their or their thighs. Or their thighs, but you I know? wouldn't win that one anyway. But but that's awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah totally. That's that live right now. Yeah, actually. So uh, so John, like your your story is pretty incredible. Um, I I want to start with the roots, meaning like before you and I even met and started working, you know, Pinnacle, which is kind of the summer sales experience. But uh, where did it all start? I I know your dad, biggest stud. I know he instilled work ethic and um, you know, but but where did the entrepreneur John Maris all begin. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned my dad and it's that, that's totally the right place to start. My dad still to this day is the biggest hustler that I've ever met. No, and I've he, met he and is. I've met some serious hustlers, but this is a guy that, you know, when I was when I was a kid was, you know, working multiple jobs and I'll, I'll talk about kind of where he began. Um today my dad is Gosh, 73 years old. Is he 73 and, now? And he's still and he's still hustling like like he's 25. Yeah, he's it's an, he's in, amazing. it's insane to me, but he just 
everything about him is and really it goes back i mean my dad was adopted from a german orphanage when he was four years old i had no idea by an, by an american serviceman and brought back to the united states so i mean you just go back to the very beginning and for him he just grew up with nothing kind of you know left his mom got dropped off at an orphanage with his brother gets adopted comes to the united states and like everything from there is like he had to go figure it out and I had no um, idea, man. it's just it's it, it's insane and so there's a lot it just like in the heritage in the in the roots yeah, yeah. but um you know my dad my dad was a door-to-door salesman in college that's how he put himself through college he sold uh, kirby vacuum cleaners and cutco <laughs> knives i love um it. and so he uh he he was door knocking before we were born that's crazy. and uh and i remember my dad was always a hustler. He was always working hard. He was an entrepreneur at heart. So he always had his hands just dabbled in lots of stuff. And I was, I was the only boy with four sisters until I was 11 when we adopted my little brother, who's we adopted from Thailand. So kind of come in full circle yeah, with my yeah. dad's adoption and everything, which is, which is really cool. But because of that upbringing, my dad and I kind of became inseparable. It was always like my mom and the girls and then me and my, yeah. me and my pops. Is your dad your best friend, would you say? Gosh, I mean, today... To be honest, like life's hard and, it, and relationships have to be worked on. Yeah. And I'd say we've been through our ups and downs. Oh, for sure. As but my dad has. to this day, I can I can say with without any hesitation is my hero for sure. That's cool. Um, and the guy that has taught me the most about who I am and, and the path that I'm on for sure. Yeah. Yep. Um, That's awesome. Somebody told me recently that uh, they were they were talking about raising kids. I have five kids. Oh, it's so easy. And uh, yeah, super easy. It's no. like the easiest thing I've ever done. Actually, it's the hardest thing uh, in the history of life. No, it's so. it's still to this day, like is the hardest thing and the most rewarding thing that I'll ever Amen. do. But um, but somebody somebody had told me that's much, much older and wiser than me. They said, you know, John, when your kids are getting older, there's going to come a time where you need to sit down with them and you need to you need to let them know that just because you live in the same house doesn't mean you're going to have a relationship, that it takes work that you're, you're going to have to be vulnerable with each other. You're going to have to open up. You're going to have to go out of your way and it's not just going to happen. So don't, don't assume that because I'm your dad or I'm your mom and we live in the same house, we're going to have a relationship, enter it every single day. Like you've got to work on it. And that's, that actually is really like just in the last three weeks been super impactful on me, not just with my kids, but in all my relationships, because it's just, you know, we're talking about going back and we've probably gone through periods of 10 years, you know, is probably the longest time bef- with us not even interacting with each other. Um, and it's cool when you can come back with people yeah, that you've known right in the there. past and it's like, boom, it's, but at the same time, it's like, man, you know, you, you want to, you want to build relationships. You want to have relationships with people. Well, anyway, I'm digressing a bit, but, um, but my dad, my dad's my hero. And he, he would take me around as a kid to his meetings. Like, like he exposed me from a young age I'd be in board meetings and stuff, and I'd be like six, seven, eight, ten years old, watching these high-end negotiations go on, and and listening to him talk and motivate and, and mentor and all kinds That's of things. That's a great idea, man. I just had so much exposure, like, and it was honestly at the time, like, I didn't even realize like what was happening, but I was just absorbing. So fast forward, um, I'm 11 years old. Okay, my my dad, my my mom grew up in the country down in Texas. So my dad grew up in Iowa, but he was an army brat. Remember yep, he was yep. adopted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he moved around a lot, but ended up my, my grandfather's, my dad's dad was his final station was down at Fort hood in Texas, outside of Austin in Colleen, Texas. And so that's where he retired and settled down. And so that's where my dad finished high school. And then he ended up going to the university of Texas in Austin because he was right there. Right. Um, and so Texas, it's kind of my mom grew up in the panhandle of Texas out in the sticks. My dad finished high school in Texas and kind of ended up in college there. And my mom always had this dream. She wanted to live on a ranch. Well, the problem is, is my dad's not a rancher. In fact, my dad is the least handy person I've ever met. So like the sink's got a leak. He he's calling touching he's calling I mean, someone. he's calling somebody yeah. for sure. Yeah. Or like let my mom get down there, but like he's not getting down there. Like they, the guy was not, not handy. And so it was super counter to think about him living on a ranch. Yeah, like yeah, it right. just, it didn't, it was counterintuitive. Yeah. But when I was 11 years old, uh, you know, one of my dad, he used to tell me all the time, like one of his goals was to, was to do well enough to buy my mom her dream ranch. ranch. You know, he, he really wanted that her to have that. And when I was 11, we, we moved out of Austin 
into a little tiny town. There's really not a name because it was between two small towns, Weir and Granger, Texas. Weir had a population of 220 people. And, uh, and we were not even in that town. Um, but we moved out to the sticks. It was a 50 acre ranch. It wasn't like anything crazy. It wasn't thousands of acres or whatever, but we raised longhorn, longhorn cattle wow. on our ranch and we had a few horses. And, um, wow. one of the things about that property that was really interesting. So I it was like, you know, a, a boy's haven, you know, I, I was just oh, yeah. out in the middle of nowhere. We had tractors and I'm just out there just living, living in the sticks, you know, right. um, we had a white picket fence that ran along the front of the house. Right. It was about a half a mile long. So, um, that's a lot of picket fence. It's a lot a of picket mile. fence. Maybe, maybe if I remember remembering right, just no exaggeration, it was a quarter mile. So it was a half a mile. If you were, if, if you think about both yeah, yeah, sides, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, I got you. I'm 11 years old. It's the first day of summer, first day of summer. So it's hot. Fourth grade. It's Texas. Hot. I'm, we walk out to the fence. My dad calls me down and he's like, Hey, I need you to come out to the fence with me. And I go out to the fence and we get out there. I'll never forget. I wish I had a picture to show you this, this picture, but we go out to, to where the, the fence starts by the gate. So it kind of goes like an eighth of a mile each direction, right? To get your quarter of a mile. And, uh, and then we have our gate with big, long driveway down to the house and we get out to the fence and there's a bunch of buckets of white paint oh, wow. and a paintbrush. And my dad looks at me and he's like, hey, your summer starts when this fence is white. So at the time it was actually just wood and he wanted it to be white. My, white, my, my mom wanted a white picket fence. And so he's like, your summer starts when the fence is white. Huh. I'm 11 years old, dude, it's Texas and it's the summer. And I'm like, you know, I'm saying all the stuff you would expect an 11 year old. This isn't fair. Why aren't the girls? Why aren't my sisters out here? I had three older sisters. And I'm like, what, what, where are they? And he's like, you're doing this fence. And yeah. he just walks away. And I'm like mouthing off and doing all the things. And by the time he's to the house, which is like 150 miles or 150 yards away from the fence. And he's like in the door, I'm still like yelling at him. I sit, I sit down on the, I'll never forget. I sit down on the bucket of paint and I sat there for probably 10 minutes just sulking, like, like just ticked it's off. Terrible. Like, I can't believe I have to do this. And then I'm sitting there and I'm getting hotter and hotter. And I'm thinking, dude, the longer I sit here, <laughs> the longer this is going to take. I have no choice. And so I break open the bucket of paint, grab the paintbrush and I start painting. It took me three weeks to paint that fence. I started normally most mornings about 6 a.m. And I would stop about 2 p.m. because it would get so hot. And, uh, and I'd go inside. And I'd do that day in and day out. I get done three weeks. I'm super proud, right? I'm super yeah, proud. I mean, I freaking work my butt off. So I, I'm, I'm chest out. I'm, I'm trudging down to the house. I go grab my dad. I'm like, I'm finished. He's like, all right, well, let's go look, you know? So we, we walk back oh, up no. there. I'm uh -oh. so pumped up, dude. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm freaking front and back. Did the whole thing. I'm done. We get out there and no lie, I'm going to stand up for this, but <laughs> okay. it's like going to be hard because the mic's right here, but I'm going to stand up. Cause this is exactly what he did. The first thing he did is he, he stood up, he, he went down like this and he bent down and he looked underneath the rails of the two by fours. Unpainted. Who in the world would possibly paint the bottom of a two by four on oh the gosh. fence? You'll never see it. You'll never see it. And he looks back at me and he says one thing, one sentence. I thought you said you were finished. He turns around and he walks back inside. And you can imagine, I'm, I think I cried. I honestly oh, I think, I, I legitimately think that I cried. I think I sobbed. And, uh, and I did the same thing. I spent like 10 minutes and, uh, you know, sulking or whatever, complaining. And then I got to work. And it took me another week or two to paint the bottom of every rung on that fence all the way down, both sides. Finally finish go get my dad. This time I'm like nervous. Like I'm not even my, I'm deflated. Like my chest isn't out. I'm like, <laughs> what is he going to tell me now? Yeah. Like I, I probably, he's going to say, coat. I want it black or, you know, I want the fence to be a different color or something. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen. So I go grab him. I'm like, I think I'm done. And, uh, and we go back out there and he looks at the fence for a second. He bends down and looks underneath and he looks at me and he says this, I never want you to forget this son work worth doing is worth doing right. 
It's awesome. Work worth doing is worth doing right. And I'll tell you, everything, everything that I've done from that point forward is influenced by that experience. Everything. I can't, at my own building now, today, I can't walk into the bathroom and walk out if there's a piece of paper towel on the floor without picking it up and putting it in the trash. I don't know what it is, but I just, I just want to do everything the best I can do it. And I tell my team members all the time, and I, I tell people, my kids all the time, I don't want you to be me. I don't want you to be the person next to you that you think is an all-star. I don't want you to be your friend that you think is better than you. All I want you to do is reach your potential. That's all we're on earth to do right. is reach your maximum potential. And the crazy thing is that all of our potential is different. Oh, for sure. It doesn't look the same and, it, and it's different in different, in, in different areas and different scopes of life. I don't care if my son becomes a garbage man as long as he is the best freaking garbage man that he Ever, could possibly yeah. be. And he knows that. And I try, to, I try to instill that in him because making money and finding professional success is not what it's all about. It really isn't. It's about fulfilling your potential and finding success in wherever you're standing. I would say, you know, this, you, you can appreciate this, um, but the church that I'm a member mm -hmm. of, you know, they, they're constantly, you know, teaching us all these cool principles. And one of the ones I love the most is lift where you stand. Uchtdorf. Very well I done. That one. It's, it's phenomenal because all it's saying is it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter how wealthy you are. It doesn't matter whether you're married or not, have children or not, whatever. Just lift where you stand. And my dad taught me that when I was 11 years old, when I was out there painting that fence. And I've just, I've never looked back. And wow. um, so fast forward to high school um, and I'm just about to graduate. Uh, and my dad says to me, one of the last things he said, which is, which will bring things full circle for you. He said, if you ever have the opportunity to knock doors, to sell door to door, I highly encourage you to take it. He said, everything for me that I've done since then has been better because of that experience. And so I come out to school and for four years, people are trying to recruit me. They're like, you'd be perfect at this. You'd be so good at this. And I'm like, probably one of those guys. I'm like, you guys are losers. You guys are a bunch of losers. I want nothing to do with this. First off, you make a ton of money. You obviously, I can't, I can't argue with that. But then you guys all come back and just blow it anyway. So like, you're idiots. You know, I don't want to work for you. And uh, and my, I graduate from college, and I'm about to go to law school, which I didn't end up doing, by the way. Yep. But uh, but I'd taken the LSAT. I'd submitted my applications. I'm about to go to law school, and I don't have anything going on for the summer. I'm newly married. And I get suckered in to join in Pinnacle. Getting Mc, married Mc, costs money. McKay self. It's all Was McKay, McKay, it's all McKay <laughs> self's fault. And, uh, and uh, so bless funny. his heart, he, uh, he took me under his wing and I went out to Philadelphia and I knocked doors for the summer. And um, that began uh, a really interesting path for me for four years where sure. I ended up uh, selling alarms for four years and um, doing that and then uh and then decided that you know at some point about four years down the line that it was time for me to get a big boy job and and i went back and got my mba at ut in austin and, and started working for for companies but uh wow what a story man i i love love that story i do you feel like there are less dads out there that are doing that kind of stuff with, with their their sons or daughters this day and age for sure it's so frowned upon like we just live in a society now that almost encourages you or makes you believe that you're doing your kids a disservice if you're not doing it for them or you're not giving them every opportunity. And I, I'll tell you, it's hard. It's just really hard. I think we also are just living in a more prosperous time. Like it, it has been easy the last 10 to 15 years and people have made more and, and yeah. real estate has, you know, house values have gone up and yeah. everything's just been a little bit easier. Interest yeah. rates have been low. So money's been basically free. And when, when you know, prosperous times uh, create a, an environment where things aren't as hard. And when things aren't as hard, you, you become weak. 
And, yeah. and I definitely think that there's, there's a lot of that and it's just like relationships. And that's why I brought that up earlier about how it, it, it has to be intentional and it requires work to build relationships because the same applies to creating an environment where you're teaching your kids or even those around you, your employees and whatever, and not making it easy. I mean, just think about even the work environment, right? It's like, man, if you don't provide ping pong tables and, and lunch and this and that, da, 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 then it's like, you have a bad, that's, that's not a good place to work. Um, Gary V is a guy that I, I follow and yeah. I, I, I really like a lot of the stuff that he teaches. And one of the things that he, he talks about, he's like, listen, the key to a great work environment is to make sure that you don't have a-holes working for you. Like oh, get so rid of true. the a-holes. He's like, it doesn't, ping pong tables aren't going to fix that problem. Yeah. He's like, that's not going to, going to solve it. And, and, and he kind of pres prescribes to kind of taking that stuff out the, the quote unquote fun stuff, because it's fun to win. It's really fun to be successful and it's fun to work with awesome people, but it's not that fun to work with crappy people or people that are rude or whatever it is um, that don't want to win. So anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, back really, to your, I back really to your like original that. question on well, the kids. Is, you know, after hearing that story, I, I, I think to you dads that are listening, give your sons and daughters a story to tell like John just told, like, Give them an opportunity to tell a story that impacted their lives like John just shared. You, you got to go out of your way. It's out of your comfort zone sometimes because you love your kids. You don't want to put them through hell. But sometimes they need to go through hell. I think a lot of kids right now need to go through hell to learn the power of, of hard work and having to work for something, work hard for something. So I, I think that's so inspiring for me. Like I sit there and listen and I'm, I had a moment like that with, with, with my father a, a couple times, even my mother. But but we as parents, we are responsible for giving stories like that to our kids to tell one day. And don't be afraid to put your kid in a situation to go through a tough time like that because this guy has benefited tremendously from it. So I, I love that. I, I want to talk about family um, for a second. One of the things I, I love and respect about you is family first. And it's not easy to put family first when you are the CEO or business leader, or, you know, it, it is, it can be incredibly hard. But one thing that I have loved about you is I've watched you over the years and just recently with some of the, I mean, you had a really cool opportunity that I threw your way and it didn't, didn't end up working out for you because you were with your son, right? And you turned down a really cool opportunity. Say, yeah, man, I got, I got my son here. Like, we're going to go have fun. We're going to go up to the slopes or whatever you said, but but tell me about how you manage that or prioritize that, uh, you know, as a leader. I think that the, the the key is to recognize, and you know, again, I'll I'll go back. There's been so many so many good lessons, but you know, Bednar Bednar teaches that balance is is really not a, a thing. Like when, when you're doing something, you're naturally neglecting something else, and so the reality is, is when you're working, there's no way around it. You're neglecting something with your family or with your friends or with something else, right? To me, the key has been two, there's two key principles that I have followed that have made all the difference in the world as it pertains to my family. The first one is the most important, which is that my wife and I are on the same page all the time, all the time. When there are times where I'm head down and like crushing it at work because that's what it requires, I'm only doing that when my wife and I are, are aligned and on the same page mm. and she is behind it. Like it's, it's as if she's almost there doing it because we're a team. And I know that when I can go do those things when my wife is crushing it at home, but I can't do those things when she's feeling like she's carrying all the weight. And so I will, the balance for me is if she ever feels like she's carrying all the weight and like she, she's not there with me when I'm doing that, then I'm there with her. That's awesome. But when, but, but most of the time, because I married a friggin' rock star, most of the time she understands it. We work through it. We figure it out. And then she's like, I'm with you. Like, go crush it. Like, That's go so crush cool. it. Like you were called to do that. And we were called to raise this family and to do what we're doing. And like, I'm and with you. And, and hopefully the epitome of, of that and like, what that led to, or, or an, a, an example of how real that is, is when we took Solo Brands public in 2021, in October of 2021, we had 13 people 
that we were allowed to put on the podium to ring the bell. Wow. And the number one person on the list standing right to my right was my wife. For sure. Everyone else was employed by the company except my wife. And I'll tell you, like, there, I got a little flack for that. So there were people in, in the company that were like, what the heck? Like, she didn't do this. Really? And I'm like, you don't guys, like, you don't get it. Like, she will be up here before I'm up here. Like, I honestly would have, I would have loved to stand down below that podium and watch her ring the bell because that's how, that's so, cool. that's how important that has been to us being able to raise a successful family and, and for me to be able to balance it the that's right way. So cool. I, if I may, before you get to number two, so my new partner, Paul Jarman. Uh, who just came over, CEO of In Contact, nice, $12 billion company. When we started meeting, after we had kind of gone through a couple days of you know him grilling me, asking me about the business, he's like, all right, this is great. He's like, hey, I need you to sit down with my wife. You're going to sit down with my wife for a couple hours. And I'm like, she's going to interview me? And he's pretty much like, yeah, <laughs> she needs to know what I'm dealing with here. So the next thing I know, I'm sitting in a room with Sarah, bless her heart, and, I, and I, I'm sitting there and she's asking me questions. And I'm like, the whole time that it was happening, I'm thinking, this is really cool. You know why? Because this man respects and loves his wife enough to, to involve her in a big decision he's about, a huge decision he's about to make. And uh, I, just, I just found that fascinating. And so I really, it's, it's really ironic or interesting that you're mentioning this. And I, I think that's so commendable and so cool. So mm -hmm. what's number two? Number two is... Be all in with whatever you're doing in that moment. And it kind of goes back to work worth doing is worth doing right. Same, same principle. With family, right? But when I'm with family, I try to be all in with family. What does that mean? It means to be present. It doesn't mean to be physically present. It means to be emotionally and to be mentally present. And the same goes at work. And I tell even my employees all the time, like, I don't, you got to take care of home because if you don't, you're going to come to work and you're going to be, your mind's going to be back at home. But you, likewise, when you go home, you got to drop what you're doing here and you got to be at home. That's the balance. That's really balanced because physically there is no such thing. You, you're going to be at work or you're going to be at home or you're going to be wherever you're going to be. But the question is, is when you're there, are you all in? And if you are, then I think that you're doing your employer or your business a great service when you're at home, you're doing your family a service. When you're with your friends or in your you know, church or whatever it is that you're yeah. into, yeah. just be all in all the time. And I think that if you do those two things, if you make sure that, you know, again, you know, I, I, my perspective is very much from a family, you know, father, husband orientation, but that partnership with my wife has been by far the most important thing. And I will say this, um, because I, one of the things that's, really important to me is authenticity. I am far from perfect. I mean, I, I still screw this up all the time. And my wife helps me recognize that frequently. As she should. But as I've gotten older, I will say that I'm better consistently than I was when I was younger, when I was, when I was newly married and then a new father and so forth. And, um, you know, it's, everything's a progression. Uh, I always, you, every day I wake up and I just think I got to be a little bit better today than I was yesterday. I don't have to be perfect. I don't have to make these massive leaps, but I need to be a little bit better than I was yesterday. And um, my wife's been a great partner to kind of help me recognize those areas, but she, she deserves the credit for sure. That's awesome. Oh man, we're getting some good wisdom. Um, here's my next uh, question for you. If you were to go back in time as you were moving into the next stage of your life as an entrepreneur, so let, let's say this is right past you know, you, you know the summer sales experience with Pinnacle, what would you, if you could go back in time and stand face to face with yourself, what would you tell that younger self of you? Oh man, um, you know people people ask me a variation of this, which is like, what would you change if you could go back? And I don't mean this in an arrogant way, but I would change nothing. I would change nothing because every experience I've had has led me to where I'm at. Maybe it's just and keep learning, keep learning, keep doing, but, keep learning. But, but if, I, if there was a principle uh, that, that I could tell my younger self and maybe have learned faster, it's that people matter. 
Um, Everyone, especially in the especially in the professional world, I, there was when I was earlier in my career, right, kind of right after door knocking, and I was getting in there. I think that my my mindset was very much like win at all costs, like win at all costs, and I don't mean like stepping on or over people to win. I don't mean it in that in that way because I never I've never been that way, but I used to have. And I still deal with this as, as like from a natural tendency standpoint, but I used to have this mindset that like people that aren't on board for like my style and what I'm doing and the way I'm doing it, like get out the way. Cause like, I ain't stopping. Like I will steamroll right through you if you're in the way of me winning. And, um, and, and I, and I also would discredit their contribution along that path. Right. And, I think I'm getting better at recognizing that everyone has a place or at least people that are, that are in it. There, there's, there's room for everyone. And, and, um, and that's been a, a big eye opener for me and I've, I've loved it. And one of the things I'm most proud of and in, in kind of the direction that we've gone and, and some of the business success that I've had is that there have been a lot of people along the way that have found a lot of success with me. It, it hasn't been the John Maris show or the John Maris path, but there's been a lot of people involved that, that have ended up in a, su such a better place, not just financially, but uh, mentally and emotionally and, yeah. you know, everything else. To and me, that's been, that's so important. Yeah. To me, and, and you've heard this before, I, I think the truest form of success in one's life is being a part of someone else's success story. That's success. If someone is talking about their success and your name comes up one time, that's winning. Yeah, that is true. That. Win. that that is true win. Yeah, and you know, I that that those are the moments in my life, and I've I've heard it a couple times, and I'm I'm humbled to hear uh, some of the stories. Uh, um, but that that is the truest form of success is if you I are a part that. of someone's success. Story. I like that. And, I've I haven't heard it said like that. That's, that's yeah. Really and cool. so I I think I think for you, you've done that. I know you've had winners. You know, the one kid that I'm talking as a Tyler at Solo Stove is that his name or is it Tyler? Who are you thinking about? Oh There's, yeah, 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 yeah. Tyler, yes. yeah, DG. I as I whenever I'm talking to that kid, I'm like, this guy gets it, and he definitely is working under John Maris, just because he's got <laughs> he's got that style and way of thinking. So when I when I meet I happen to I happen to know Tyler's dad. So in the in the in the in the spirit of true authenticity, I will say this: Tyler's dad is an absolute stud. And uh, there's so much about his dad. His name's Dave, uh, but Dave's Dave's a stud. Tyler naturally has a lot of what he has. But what what I did recognize in Tyler was that he had it, and that if I could get him into our environment, he would no longer be suppressed, yeah. and it would be able to fly. And, and we've him. created we've created an environment to empower him, which has been awesome. Yeah. So so for me, and you know, <clears throat> this kind of goes out to a few people in here, but when when I ever employ someone. They are a representative of both you and the brand, right? Yeah. So finding someone that represents you well and get the a-holes out of there, that's it's you that destroys a company. Gary Vee's right. Um, but you want happy, optimistic, positive attitude people. I mean, it is a priceless thing to have a good attitude and a person that is positive, full of energy inside of an organization. It's priceless. It's one of the most powerful things that leads to success for an organization. Organization, and I truly believe that. So um, I would sure I'm sure you would agree. 100 percent on that. 100 percent. So here's where I want to go next because we've got we got a few more minutes here. Um, I mean this sincerely. You've got some incredible brands that you oversee that are growing. You know, you and I are getting ready to get into a meeting about moving one of those products into the other side of the world. You know, solar stove into potentially getting into to China. Or maybe it's already in there, but um, uh, tell us tell us about Solo Brands and what's next because I've already talked about Solo Stove. It's essentially a a a stove that you can set up anywhere, anytime, any place. Right? It's a portable stove. It is so cool. The Chubby's brand, you know, he just let me know that those pants are chubby. I was like, those are nice, you know, these are Chubby's pants. Um, but tell us what's next. I, I want to hear. What's the goals? Where are you going next? How are you doing this? You know, I, my vision for solo brands has always been about creating a household name. 
but that household name has to mean something. One of the things that I love about our brands is that what they do is facilitate good moments and lasting memories. That's, that's how we talk about it at Solo Brands. It's about facilitating experiences. And, and it dawned on me several years ago, right after I joined Solo Stove, when I got an email and a customer, it was just, it, there were a lot of individual experiences. I won't go into the, the, the long version stories of, 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 of some of these emails, but the consistent theme was people sending notes in and thanking me or the company for something that they did. So cool. And I'm like, that's crazy. That's like, success. They're giving us, they're giving us credit because they got their teenager to put their cell phone down and sit around this really cool smokeless fire pit and actually have conversation for the first time. Or they're giving us credit for this romantic evening that they had with their spouse who ha- who wouldn't sit around a fire because they hate their hair smelling like smoke and having to take a shower That's after so cool. an evening around the fire. They're giving us credit for this moment that they had with their grandparent where they heard their stories from when they were a kid and got them talking again for the first time in 10 so years. Cool. And I'm like, this is crazy, y'all. We don't, we don't make fire pits. W- what we do is we facilitate experiences. And so everything we do, every product we design has to be focused around experiences and facilitating those experiences. So fast forward a few years later when we start thinking about acquiring brands and we're talking to Oru Kayak foldable origami kayaks that weigh 20 pounds you can put on your back like a backpack you can fit it in the back seat of, of a prius That's so or cool. aisle aisle surf and stuff which is surf and stuff which is you know basically surfboards and, and stand-up paddle boards and what that 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 craze has been insane in terms of creating experiences outdoors and then i meet chubbies the one that more often than not people go i don't really get it like i understand hmm. how stove like went to kayaks and stove went to like paddle boards like all that makes sense but chubbies? Like, I don't, I don't really understand. Let me tell you this. When I wear, this is actually a full chubbies outfit, but most of the time I wear my really flamboyant, awesome chubbies tops yeah. whenever I travel. So Parrot shirts, you know, whatever. They're the same prints that are on the trunks that you love, right? I walk through an airport and I'm telling you, no lie, every single time I've ever been in an airport in a chubby shirt, at least one person has stopped me with a big smile on their face and said, I love your shirt. That's and they've got a so. big smile. And I'm going, dude, you don't even know me and I made you smile. I didn't even talk to you yeah. and I made you smile. Talk about creating experiences. Talk about bringing happiness, putting smiles on people's faces. Chubby's as a brand does that better than any brand I've ever met. And it was such an obvious acquisition for us because everything about Solo Brands is creating good moments and lasting memories. Dude, that is awesome. And I have to admit, I feel sexy in a chubby swimsuit. You probably look sexy. I feel, I'm like, it's the first time I've ever had shorts on. I'm like, yeah. Like I look at them, I'm like, I look sexy. Hey, babe, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> oh, you look cute. Oh, I'm I like, love it. cute or handsome or both, you know. Skies out, thighs out, man. Yeah, I mean, that's it's, right. Uh, it's, it's such a fun brand. But, uh, but, you know, what's next for us is to continue finding ways to create a household. There's so many people that still don't even know who we are. I talk to people, I'll wear a solo stove t-shirt and they're like, what's that? You know, what is that? I don't, I don't know what that is. Yeah. Oru or Isle. I mean, you haven't even heard of a couple of the brands until we started talking about it this morning. And so there's so much room for us uh, to continue and, and not just here domestically, but obviously globally, um, we see big opportunities. So um, very underpenetrated, low penetration, big upside. Um, but we want to continue to, to look not just at, at what we can do with the brands that we have, but new product innovation has, has been a big deal. We launched a portable pizza oven at Solo Stove last year. So now you can cook pizzas in your backyard for two minutes or less. Um, it's just a phenomenal Keep it product. rolling, baby. Uh, so I it's just, it. there's so much opportunity. We have so, so cool. much permission and we're immensely, like almost unhealthily, so focused on customer experience and delivering an exceptional customer experience that um, people love our brand. Almost half of our new customers come from referrals, which you'll love because you're in the game of referrals, For getting sure. people to talk about and For creating sure. virality around For sure. brands that are great. For sure. not, not bad brands, but real brands. And I think we're so proud that we have customers that want to run around and tell their friends and family members, the people that, that trust them the most, that they should buy a solo stove or that they should buy a pair of chubby swim trunks or whatever it might be. 
that that I'm the most proud of because it says to me that we're doing right by our customers. You're you're absolutely right, man. And <laughs> I commend you and I'm I'm so proud of you, bro. Like I love seeing people win, especially good people like you. And the fact that you're so set on experiences means you get it. I mean, the current state of the world, I mean, if you look at people in general, they don't care about material goods. They don't care about cash and massive homes, even they've done studies on this. They want experiences and memories. Totally. That's what they want. Yeah. And it's not only as far as a customer, it's also for employees. What's happening on the inside of your business? They're looking for experiences too. Totally. Everything is experience driven. Yep. And you're winning, dude. Like I I love, I love seeing it. Um, and I appreciate you coming on, man. Oh, like, dude. Thank you. There are so all much. sorts of uh, sorts of pieces <laughs> of wisdom in this. Um, but I I uh I want to throw something your way. Do we do we have it close by? You know, I learned and I was happy to learn. This is my number two. The John's number one cereal is the luckiest of charms. And, Check it out. Uh, and so we wanted to, to, you know, grace you with the gift for being here with us today. And I hope you enjoy those. Thank you okay. so much. I will. And in fact, I'm going to, every bowl that I savor out of this box, you're going to be in the back of my mind oh, as I, mean, I eat. That means a lot, brother. So that means a lot. Anyway, thanks for being on. Uh, oh, wait, where should people find you? Social oh, media pages or so, Solo Stove? Where do you want them going so they can learn more about you? Oh, my gosh. So solobrands.com okay. is actually a cool place because it's you don't actually shop on solobrands.com, but you link out to any of our four brands. Cool. So if you're like, oh, I can't remember what's the website for this company or that company, just remember solobrands.com and you can go find all of them. Check it out, folks. Anyway, until next time, sayonara. Thanks.